Let's discuss political participation. In 1840, there was a presidential election, and in that election, we find that over 80% of the eligible voters actually voted in that presidential election. Fast forward to the year 2012, just a year or so ago, our presidential election at that time, uh, we saw less than 60% of the eligible voters participate in the election. From 1840 to 2012, we have removed all sorts of obstacles that would keep individuals from voting, thereby increasing the number of individuals eligible to participate in the voting process. Yet we see a declining number of participants. Many of our young people today, today cite various reasons for why they do not participate in the voting process. Some say the lack of civility in the political process, others the lack of harmony that exists among politicians, and then there are those who cite the in es escalated tone of discourse uh, in political debates. All of these things are uh, blockages to political participation. We're going to discuss in this unit voter participation. We're going to look at the reason why some people vote and others do not. We'll look at conventional forms of participation, other conventional forms of participation, forms like campaigning, lobbying. Uh, we'll look at the new uh, form of virtual participation, and we'll talk about other community activities where one can enter into the political process uh, by participating at a very base level. And finally, we're going to look at some of the unconventional means of participating in the uh, political process, uh, some of the forms that are adopted by activists today. We'll use as a case study the uh, Tea Party. We'll also look at the Occupy Wall Street movement. And then we will look at uh, how politics uh, have influenced, been influenced by those who participated. And beyond that, we want to look at how you might potentially influence the political process by your participation. Let's dive into political participation today.